A little more complicated one now. We're gonna have the same type of situation. You have an alkene, you have HBr. So we know we're gonna make a carbocation. You should be able to see these reagents and say, this is a carbocation situation. It's also regioselective, right? It's regioselective because we're gonna pick between carbon one and carbon two, right? Carbon two is more substitutes, so that'd be a better place to have a carbocation. But we always wanna make sure we follow our things. Let's draw on the hydrogens. Let's not lose hydrogens or lose carbons. And this one, we're gonna, I'm gonna take it a step further and number everything. Three, four, five, six. First step in all these reactions is the pi bond is the nucleophile. It attacks the electrophile hydrogen, breaking the HBr bond. Where are we gonna form a new carbon hydrogen sigma bond? Which carbon is gonna get the new bond? One. Carbon one, very good. means the plus charge is going to be on carbon 2. But the new sigma CH bond is on 1. This H is still on carbon 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have a secondary carbocation. We should, if that's, that's not the most stable carbocation in the world, can we make it rearrange to make it more stable? Also, let's not just think about the carbocation, let's think as the molecule as a whole. Somebody should be looking at this being like, that's a square. Squares have 90 degree bond angles. I hope that's what you're thinking. What's the hybridization state of all the atoms in the square? SP3, there's no pi bonds, SP3. What's the bond angle for an SP3 hybridized atom? 109.5, certainly not 90. So these are gonna be strained, right? These bonds are gonna be strained. This is gonna be, right, these bonds aren't as strong right the orbitals aren't overlapping that well because of the angle strain so because of that we're going to want to break this ring open so what you're going to need to do right is think about those hyperconjugation buddies now it's not that wild here's the carbon that's carbocations so we're going to look for what sigma bonds two bonds away one two one two one two so now be careful here one thing we can get tripped up on there's an h here right so somebody might say, well, wait a second. Let's do a hydride shift. Let's rearrange this H and move it over. We'll make a tertiary carbocation. Whoa, you just made it worse. Let's look at, let's look at why that's gonna be worse. So this is, I'm gonna draw something that's incorrect now. Hold on to your seats. I'm gonna say the blue is bad. So let's say I did that. Let's prove it to ourselves why that's bad. Don't take my word for it, make me prove it to you. Now there's a plus charge here. Draw on our H's. We didn't lose those H's in that original go round. Get a new H here. Number those carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Tertiary, tertiary carbocation. Fantastic, right? Why is this not fantastic? Why is this? Yes, it is a tertiary carbocation, but this is bad. It's bad. Why is it bad? What's the hybridization state for a carbocation? SP2. What are the bond angles for an SP2 hybridized carbon? Bond angles for SP2 hybridized is planar and those are the 120. Huh. Here it was 109.5, which was bad. Now it's 120. I would argue that would be worse. So this is not downhill, right? This is a tertiary carbocation, but Oh man, super duper bad. Right? You can't, you, it's not so easy. You can't just say, oh, tertiary, all tertiary carbocations work. Right? You gotta think about it a little bit more. Think about that hybridization state and those bond angles, right? All that stuff still matters. So we're not gonna do that. So I'm gonna redraw this whole thing. All right, so I redrew our original carbocation. So we're not gonna do a hydride shift. We're not gonna do this from three. Instead, we're gonna look at a different hyperconjugation, buddy. These sigma bonds, one, two bonds away. So what are we gonna do? We're actually gonna break this bond between three and six. And that bond's gonna break, and now six is gonna be bonded to two. So who has a plus charge now? Where's the plus charge gonna end up? Who lost a bond? Six gained a bond, six is now bonded to two. Three lost a bond. 
So it's weird because right here, three again is going to have the plus charge, but it's going to look much different. Now we've opened this ring up, right? We no longer have a four membered ring. Now we have a one, two, three, four, five membered ring. Much more reasonable. So let's draw that. We can draw it, I'll draw it ugly. Who cares? We'll fix it later. It's okay. It's going to be okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. And where was the plus charge again? On three. Good. Let's redraw as a fire membrane. Let's make it a little prettier. This is why numbering is nice because we don't have to worry. Right? We'll just number. So there's one. There's two, three, four, five, six. And where was the plus charge? Three. Awesome. Are we done? No. So what kind of carbocation is this? Secondary. Somebody might say, well, wait a second. This was a secondary. It was a secondary. You're right. But it was a secondary carbocation with a four-membered ring, also in the molecule. This is a secondary carbocation without that four-membered ring, without that strain. So this is a less higher, lower energy intermediate in this reaction. So you'd be still going downhill, even though you're going from secondary to secondary. So you still got to think about it, right? It's not so easy just to say, right, just like before, tertiaries are always better. No, nope. got to think about it. You can't, like I said before, usually you don't do lateral moves. Well, this isn't a lateral move. It's a secondary carbocation and a secondary carbocation. But there's other stuff in this molecule that makes this higher in energy. All right, so now we have a secondary. And so again, we need to look at, can we make this more stable? So we have to look for our hyperconjugation buddies again. And we actually, of course, can. There's an H on carbon two. And if we move those electrons to three, we can get a tertiary carbocation now again. So what's that look like? Get that plus charge there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, all along the way, we've forgotten him. BR minus has always been with us to balance our charge. So now it finally matters. Now we can do that inter between two molecules reaction. And of course, it's going to get. It could attack from the top or the bottom, but is that going to matter here? Are we going to make an asymmetric center here? Take a look. Are we making an asymmetric center? Is carbon 2 an asymmetric center? Does it bond to four different things? It is not. Right? Methyl and bromine are different, but then 3 and 6 are the same. Right? It becomes symmetrical. So you don't need to write plus an antimer. As a matter of fact, you don't want to write plus an antimer. This is the only product.